so welcome back to my channel uh, this video is a preview of how the live stream is going to be the live stream will be a discussion on neuroanatomy but it will be based on questions so we'll be having marathon review questions where we have pictures and then you are supposed to identify uh, whatever the structure is and give something that is uh, clinically relevant to that question so for example on question one this is part of neurohistology and this is testing on the peripheral nervous system so this is what we call a pseudo unipolar neuron so this is the cell body of the pseudo unipolar neuron and you can be able to see the nucleus there of the pseudo unipolar neuron and then what you can be able to see here are the what we call the neurosatellite cells. So you have a polygonal shaped uh, soma. When you talk about the soma, you talk about the cell body of the neuron. And this is where integration of neuronal information occurs. And then you have the supporting cells here, the neurosatellite cells. So this pseudo unipolar neuron, uh, a collection of them is what forms a ganglion. And specifically the dorsal root ganglion. So one disease that affects uh, this ganglion uh, is the herpes zoster or the varicella zoster. So remember the dermatomal uh, shingles that you get, those vesicle uh, eruptions that you get. So usually the herpes uh, goes to this ganglion. It can remain inactive for a long time. When a patient becomes immunosuppressed, it becomes reactivated again. So you tend to see uh, herpes zoster reactivation in adults who are immunosuppressed with retroviral diseases like HIV. So this is a question on neuroembryology and it's showing you the spinal cord as it's forming. So here you can be able to see the roof plate and so C will be the floor plate. So this will be the floor plate and this will be the roof plate. And you can be able to see the neuroepithelial layer around the central canal. So this is where the ependymal cells will form. Then you have the mantle layer and you have the marginal layer at that point. So this area is called, so called the ventricular layer or the ventricular zone. So this A will be the ala plate. And then you are going to have your X being the basal plate. So the main concept to remember here is that as you come towards uh, the basal plate, you are going to be mortar. And as you go towards your ala plate, you have sensory. So here you have your sensory, and then you have, you have your motor neurons developing. Okay. And so this uh, area here is known as the sulcus limitans, what basically divides your uh, sensory from your motor uh, development uh, regions. So this one uh, shows you gross anatomy of uh, the neuro, uh, the brain. So what you have here are the gyri having been labeled. So you have the paracentral lobule there. This is the cingulate gyrus. You can be able to see here you have the cuneus. So this will be the precuneus gyrus. Then you have the lingual gyrus with a tongue like protrusion at that point. And that's why it's considered to be lingual. Okay, and then this is the parahippocampal gyrus at that point. So this is the parahippocampal gyrus. This is the rostral part of the parahippocampal gyrus. So this is part of neurohistology, and this is uh, the Meissner's corpuscles. So here we are talking about uh, sensory receptors for general sensation. Okay, so remember there are sensory receptors for special sensation like the retina, the organ of Corti, or your uh, circumvallate uh, papilla. But these are uh, sensory receptors for general sensation, specifically fine touch so this is the epidermis and this is the dermis these are what we call the epidermal pegs and then these are the dermal papillae so at the, at the dermal papillae the junction between the epidermis and the dermis this area here this is where you usually find the mesinous corpuscles and they are located in areas where you need a lot of fine touch like the pulp of the fingers or like the areola of the nipple okay so this shows you the base of the brain you can be able to see the olfactory tract there okay as before it splits into the lateral and the medial stria then you can be able to see the optic nerves there and this is the optic chiasm and these are the optic tracts okay 
So you have the nerve there, the chiasm at two, and then you have the tract. So the lesion at the point level two, that is the optic chiasm, will give what we call bitemporal hemianopia. And that is usually caused by a pituitary macroadenoma. Because the pituitary gland, remember, sits at the cellular tussica, which means if it, if it grows outside the cellular tussica, it will actually compress at this level of the chiasm. Now remember the chiasm has medial fibers from the retina. And so those medial fibers running the optic nerve are carrying the temporal visual fields. And so if you compress the chiasm, you lose the temporal visual fields from both, uh, from both eyes. So the, you bo lose both uh, temporal visual fields. That's why we call it bitemporal hemianopia. So thank you and I look forward to the live stream later. Okay, if there is any question regarding these five questions, you can post them on the comment section below.